Paintball Nerd. Today's guest on Paintball Nerd's Industry Impact interview started playing paintball in 1987. In 1991, he turned pro with the team he started, Sydney SWAT. He's owner of Action Paintball Games. He's owner of PaintballShop.com. He runs the Super 7 Series in Australia. He's the president of the Australian Paintball Industry Association. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, an Australian and worldwide paintball legend, Mr. Mike Wybrew. <laughs> What's up? Okay. Hey, mate. How you going? That's a big intro. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? Well, hey, that, that's that's all you've done. Over, I mean, you've been in paintball 30 years, you know, had yeah, a lot to say. Thanks, yeah. As soon as you started <laughs> off with that, I felt old straight away. Boom, <laughs> <laughs> well, you you might be you might be old compared to a lot of the people viewing. Yeah, this, the, these aren't highlights, mate. This isn't streaking. This is yeah, <laughs> this is the real gray. Oh, believe it or not, I'm old. I'm considered old too. So you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Mike, how, I mean, how'd you get into paintball? Well, actually, back in 1987, a friend of mine uh, just said, "Hey, man, we're going to go play this skirmish game. You want to come?" And I, he gave me a basic description of what it was. I thought, "Yeah, it sounds awesome." And, uh, you know, went and, uh, went and played this hidden field up at the Central Coast, about two hours' drive from here. Uh, the old Bolt Action Sheridans, you know, that had yeah. a mad time. Absolutely loved it. it was, I mean, by today's standards, let's just say it wasn't really a safe event or a safe venue sure. or anything like that, but we had a great time. And then, um, yeah, it was about, about a year or so later, I finally got to do it again. And then the guy from up there sold to a guy down at Wallachia. And all of a sudden, I was playing almost every weekend, hmm. you know, just every Sunday going out, you know, to, to play this game. So, uh, yeah, that's how it sort of started, just as a paintball addict. Yeah, paintball addict. And then you eventually turned you, you turned it into a business. You have your field. You got your store. And, of course, you're president of the association. So, which came first? Uh, the field, then the store. And then uh, I sort of got involved in the lobbying and everything with the regulations, though, because we have really stupid laws in Australia for paintball. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, back in the early nineties, it wasn't even legal to play in New South Wales. It was, a, it was a legal activity. So that took a couple of years to get it legalized. And then it's sort of been a fight ever since then, just, you know, getting more common sense approach. And we had a mm. big win in 2019, finally got paintball guns taken away from being classed as firearms. So uh, in, in New South Wales, in the state, and it's opened it up a lot more now where, you know, and the age got dropped down to 12. Uh, you, you still need a license per se or a permit to, to own a paintball marker, but that whole process is done completely online. It's instant. Okay. And then once you've got your permit, you can buy as many paintball markers as you want, no drama. Um, and the other cool thing, the permit is for ownership, not use. So it means that, you know, now we have a situation where, you know, dad can buy two or three paintball markers and go to his local field and his kids can play as long as they're 12 and up, they can use his gear and save the mm. money, um, play cheaper. Got so it. that's a real big plus. Yeah, so but you don't have to have a license. To, so you don't have to, per se. Yeah, it's, you don't, so it's like only to buy. Permit. But yes. anyone can use it. I can buy a gun for my friend, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you're playing at a park, yeah. So um, that's that's a plus. So yeah, if you go play paintball, you don't need a, a license or anything. You can go, the, the field has a, a conduct games permit that lets anybody 12 and up in New South Wales use their rental guns at the field. So how did that happen? I mean, you're playing paintball, you're having a blast. What made you say, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to start action paintball games. So like what, what was involved in that process? Well, look, I, it was two things for me. Um, we wanted to play all the time and we we're rocking up. And this particular guy that was running the field at Wallachia, I think he, he worked, uh, he worked at, as like a, a, at a pub and he just kept coming you know, we'd all rock up, get there at like seven o'clock in the morning. And it's like a two, three hour drive to get to where his venue was. Uh, so we, we'd get out there and be waiting an hour or two for this guy to turn up half tanked, start playing paintball, having a mad time. And then it's like one o'clock. Oh no, I've got to go. You almost, you know, had the shakes in the hand, like you need to head back to the pub. And so that was, that was part one. It was really frustrating. God, we want to give this guy money and he doesn't want it. He'd rather go and get on the cans at the local um, at the pub. <laughs> And then yeah. the big deal, the big thing that made me think about doing this as a business was, because I'm custom service orientated, was one day he turned up at the field. And this, like I said, this is like in the early 90s. And he's pulled out this thing called a Tipman 68 Special. 
gone click like this and gone bang, 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 bang. And I thought, wow, okay, that's a bit of a game changer. Now we can, you know, if this would make a lot more viable business as opposed, yeah. you know, back in the day with the, the bolt actions, you know, if you shot 50 paintballs, you're, you're nuts. Yeah. God, what, you know, where you shoot that much ammo for, you know, because you're going to only hold 13 balls in the chamber and yeah. about 20 shots, you have to go back up the hatch and get it regassed. So it was a different style of, of play totally. completely. Um, so, yeah, so basically that was pretty much, once I saw this thing with the semi-automatic paintball gun, I thought, oh, okay, let's look at doing it. Yeah. Interesting. And so what, what year did you start Action Paintball Games? Well, I had a previous company uh, at another venue in 1991, but I started Action Paintball with my current business partner, John, and uh, one of my dear friends, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Stark, uh, back in 1999. So that's when the, the actual the current entity that is all of this started at a paintball park at Rouse Hill. Hmm. So, um, yeah, that's where it started. Were you the first, first in Australia? No, no, no. That's, paintballs actually started, uh, it was thriving up in Queensland at first. Uh, Queensland, there was, the laws were really simple and they weren't illegal and stuff like that. So New South Wales took, a, it was probably one of the latest states to get legalized. Gotcha. Well, you're certainly one of the largest in Australia now. Yeah, you have to be the largest, I'd, I'd assume. Um, no, no. There's there's a couple of there's a couple of paintball fields that are bigger than us. Uh, when we mm. after COVID, we shut our Rouse Hill location, moved all our business to our Yarramundi site, and coming out of the post COVID world, we actually reduced the numbers so that we can, can cater there. So there's a there's a Heartbreak Ridge at Rupera. They're busier than us. They're a much better location in that sense of uh, numbers mm. of people. But then, yeah, probably down in Victoria, places like Snipers Den and uh, World Series Paintball, they do some pretty big numbers. But it's just gotcha. something we're not interested in doing now. I, 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 I've been down that road back in the late 2000s, 2007, 2008, where, you know, you're getting to work at 6 in the morning and you're there cleaning stuff up at 10.30 at night because you've just done 400 people through the venue. It's just, yeah, yeah it doesn't interest me anymore. I <laughs> gotcha. So, Mike, how did the Super 7 Series come about? Um, actually, that was um, a joint thing between myself and a gentleman named Tim McCarthy up at Paintball Australia in Queensland back in the late 90s. Uh, we were finding it was weird as paintball got legalized uh, everywhere, and then people actually have a license. There was a lot of people that were playing back in the old days when it wasn't so legal that probably, well, they couldn't get a license to save their day for a paintball gun or a firearm because they might have had a CD passed or a bit of a, mm. a rough record. So we had, when, yeah. it, when it got legalized, we found all of a sudden uh, a lot of people disappeared from the sport. And it was very hard to rule doing 10 men and five men events, pretty much I think the same in the 90s with, uh, you know, BSB and American, and uh, MPPL, sorry, MPPL. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided to try and do something in between the two. And we started the seven man, we called it the Super Seven Series. And uh, yeah, sort of went on from there. And then a couple of years later, uh, Tim didn't want to do it anymore. So I just kept the mantle. I mean, it's very hard. Um, when you're doing an event and the big thing for us with the Super 7s is trying to have the same same expectations for the players at every event so the same level of quality of refereeing the prizes yeah. um, the, the facilities all that sort of stuff so every time I tried to take it in a state um, to other venues it was difficult to get those other operators or venues to agree to provide all the services that we needed and now, um, you know, with the webcast that we do, uh, it's just too hard to do it anywhere else. Mm. So, yeah, we do all that, you know, for the pro division, you know, we've got, I don't know if you've seen our live stream and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, we, we do the full 4K cameras and commentators booth and yeah, it's a pretty good setup. Who, who does your commentating? Uh, that, well, me and uh, usually a couple <laughs> of players. I've got a guy named Jamie Angus uh, from Eskimo Brothers. He comes and guest commentates with us now for all the events. And uh, we had uh, Ryan Newman uh, for the last one. He's from the Marauders. And quite often when, you know, when everything's all normal, pre, like pre-COVID, you know, we'd have the likes of half the dynasty and Pete yeah. and all these really top players coming over and guessing on the teams. So in between point, you know, we, in between matches, they're not on that match. You know, it'd be great. We'd have Ryan Greenspan or um, uh, Marcelo or, you know, uh, just, just, yeah, heaps of guys just coming up. Blake Yarbo just commentating the boots in the pits as well, which is awesome. Having them next year commentating. So it looks like your next one is in on in May, right? May twenty yep. sixth. Yep. For the pro division. Yeah, for the pro division. 
Cool. And you'll be able to, you'll be able to watch that. For, it's free live stream, 100% free. We're keeping it free thanks to our sponsors. You know, like That's HBR awesome, and man. DLX and all that. So, yeah, we, we fund it all in-house. And, uh, yeah, there's no – you know, not taking away from what the – and Excel do they do a fantastic job with their webcasts as well. And I pay my yeah. nine ninety a month for it. Um, but yeah, yeah we're same trying here. to go a different we try to go a different angle where um, we're trying to get more people to actually see the sport and stuff like that. So hopefully we can build it back up. We were getting st- awesome numbers before COVID. And then like I said, coming out of COVID, it's hit us for a six with a few with the number of teams playing and number of people watching. And then I think also uh, things like obviously, you know, Facebook, uh, they like to choke all your feeds if it's got paintball or guns or knives. So we've mm. found that uh, Facebook's starting to choke us in the feed a bit more as well. So it's just kind of disappointing. So you got to actually actively look for it to be able to watch it. So it's on, on YouTube is where you want to look, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cause you, well, Facebook's in 720, but we in YouTube it's 1080p. So yeah, so it's a, it's a higher res to watch. I, I love it, Mike. You know, the more the more eyes you can get on paintball, the better. That's the, the Absolutely. biggest chance of the sport growing. You know, even like I... I, I will I gladly pay my ten dollars a month to go sports. I love it. I Same. think what they're doing is great, but I'm not going to be able to get my grandma to do it. No. You know, it's but having her say, "Hey, grandma, go on YouTube and you know type in Super Seven, she can watch that. So I think you're you're definitely doing something positive there by exposing it to more people. And man, you've been doing a lot for us for for paintball, but also in Australia, you know, and specifically you. you you really helped to grow the the sport there. Well, I love it, mate. So, you know, it's a passion. Yeah. Uh, but if, the worst thing is, right, I finally got like with the sevens. I've got what I would love as an event and I don't play it. Mm. It yeah. sucks. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, to be honest too, um, you know, like the pro division over here is very competitive. These guys mm. are mostly athletes. They train, they, you know, they go to the gym, they eat right. I mean, you know, when I was playing pro, you know, we we drink on the Friday and Saturday and Sunday <laughs> night. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't get we wouldn't get wasted. But you know, you think I'd be having a couple of beers or a JD with your steak sure. and chips and stuff like that. No, yeah. these guys stopped drinking the week before. Yeah, you know, I'd be I'd be cut from my own team if I was playing right now. Plus, yeah, <laughs> don't, I don't. You know, the mind is willing, but the body's not able, mate. Not not not. I, speed I know what you mean. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like that in in the states here. We have the NXL where you know the guys take it really seriously. You know, there's yeah. not definitely no drinking going on. Um, you know, they're all athletes. They train. They're in shape. And then we have the ten man leagues, which is like in the woods. And yeah. you know, they're everyone. Everyone's got a cooler. You know, at their you know at their station with you know beers in it, and everyone's having a good time. So it's like yeah. kind of like where the old guys go to play paintball and and you know can have a good time. Well, so. we, we we do a similar thing. We have a thing called the Yarra Ten Men. We do in July every year, and it's the same thing. Uh, I copied it from my dear old friend uh, Tim Montressa. Um, may yeah. rest in peace. Um, and uh, we copied the format exactly. And I started doing the ring around. It's about five years ago now, or six years ago now. Um, did the ring around, rang up all because you know SWAT's been around for thirty odd years as an example. So I had about a hundred people to choose from. And I'm ringing everybody going, hey, man, we're going to do this 10, man. You want to come back and play? It's mechanical only and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it's been awesome because the, the Yarra 10, man, for us, it's only a small event because it's 10, man. Um, but it's really cool because there's so many of the old school ballers, you know, on mm-hmm. our on our SWAT recon team that we do, we've got guys that played on the team in the 90s, in the 2000s, the 2010s, and on the current pro roster, which is cool. So I've seen all these guys that never met each other before until they came and played the 10, man. Yeah. And I think that's what also I'd love to come over and do one of the uh, 10 mans over there for that same reason. And yeah, it's, it's very casual, the 10 man. Now I'm drinking on yeah. the Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. I'll have a beer, you know? So yeah. It's so yeah. Maybe even in between games. <laughs> I know. I, 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 actually, I couldn't do that, man. I, I, I wouldn't be able to play. <laughs> I'd be, it'd be just yeah. be too hard. I mean, <laughs> I don't need anything to slow me down. I've got nature doing that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mike, you, you've been, playing paintball for, for 30 years. You've built up a lot of amazing memories. I mean, share with us, share, share with us your most memorable moment in paintball. Oh, I can't, I, I mean, really, I had to think about this last night and there's been so many cool things. I mean, paintball has allowed me to travel all over the world um, yeah. uh, with, with my, with my teammates as well. You know, SWAT has played in uh, South Africa, uh, all through Southeast Asia, uh, North America twice, 
um, New Zealand, you know, Taiwan, Singapore, you know, we've, we've been everywhere and it's all thanks to paintball pretty yeah. much. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of really cool experiences through paintball that maybe not have happened on the paintball field. Yeah. Uh, but still it's all part of the, the, and that's the cool thing, you know, when you're traveling with all your mates and, you know, good family and friends and going to different countries and experiencing different cultures and stuff like that. And then, you know, meeting all these cool people and shooting them or attempting yeah. to at least. <laughs> yeah. It's true, man. But uh, yeah, well, no, no, there's no, I mean, there's no real one. I mean, you know, obviously winning events is pretty cool. There's been a couple of events. I've, I've sort of been the last player left on the field and we've won the event. That's awesome. But that's uh, awesome. I think it's just, the, it's just the overall experience of being able to travel with a group of friends and you know, play some paintball and playing paintball itself is, is the cool thing. It is. What about, what, what's your favorite place that, uh, place that you've been as far as traveling? To, to play paintball? Yeah. Probably, um, probably be, uh, I'm going to say probably Orlando. At one of the world, the world cup back in the nineties. Yeah. Well, cause you know, you can go type in, machine gun where can i shoot machine guns cool awesome yeah. let's go you know uh stuff we yeah because guns are illegal in australia right well no 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 we have guns actually we have a lot of guns and a lot of shooters uh we did lose a lot of uh semi-automatic firearms like rifles uh back in 96 uh, when they had the big buyback and made everybody hand stuff in but uh yeah wow. we have handguns we have rifles or different calibers but it does vary from state to state so i think we're like america every mm. state and territory of australia has similar but slightly different regulations and rules into what you can own and can't own depending on from state to state and same with paintball you know the age you can play paintball varies from state to state the rules regulations the cost to own a paintball gun varies greatly from state to state as well got it yeah that makes sense i mean here it's like paintball guns are are legal everywhere here in the united states yeah. but the firearms laws are are different you know yeah. like I live in Tennessee now and Tennessee, you can, you can go to a gun store and buy any gun that you want awesome. as long as you have the money and you can walk out the door with it that same, same day within minutes yep. in California, so cool. you can't buy, I mean, you have to go through a background check and you're not going to walk out with a gun. You know, you're going to put down money. You're going to do a background check. And then there's several guns and types of guns that you are not, not even allowed to buy there. You can't buy, they're yep. illegal there. So it's very interesting how the different states have different laws, but um, it is funny because you know somehow like a state border somehow stops guns from going from one to the other. Like exactly. it's just a stupid thing. But anyway, yeah, we're the yeah. same team. <laughs> so, Mike, who's your who's your favorite teammate of all time to play with? Um, I'm, I've had a, oh, a few. Look, I'm probably going to say Adam Connolly, who works for me now. Adam's always been great value to play with. Uh, he's an awesome. He was an awesome baller back in the day when he came over uh, from Canada, and uh, yeah, yeah, prob probably Adam would be why, the one. Why was he your favorite? Uh, well, we got we played a lot of events all over the world. He, we traveled there because Adam works for me, um, and uh, no, just no, he was just a force. He's great. He's one of those guys that's really awesome to be at the start gate with. So you know, for years when I was the captain, I'm the guys going, okay, you know, let's kill these guys. Yeah, right, right, get them all juiced up. But yeah, uh, Adam, Adam is really good at doing that. He really gets you like you literally could see a bayonet as he's geeing up, you know, ready to go. But I can't yeah. shoot, you've got to stab him as well sort of thing. So, and he's, a, <laughs> he's an awesome baller. He, he was a really good baller. Yeah. Well, you need both. You can't just be the hype guy and then not shoot anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> got to be what competitive. About, um, yeah, yeah. What about player to watch? Is there a player throughout all time in everywhere where yep. you just – Enjoy watching them. Oh, uh, look, I, I got to say, it's the GOAT, mate. It's Greenspan, 100%. Yeah. All day long, night and day. Yeah. I mean, there's, and look, don't be wrong, it's NXL uh, is just full of superstars. All, you know, playmakers, all able to do everything. But for sheer consistency and the stuff that he pulls off, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ryan. I always have. He's, and he's a good bloke, too. He's a really nice fella. Likes yeah. his movies. That's cool. Yeah, he man, he's a uh, and how long that he's been good. That's also amazing too. Like it's like yeah, I, I think he, personally, he sold his either he sold his soul to the devil, yeah. or he's been augmented. <laughs> I think he's been augmented. I think he's been augmented. You can't just keep pulling stuff. He's got a radar in the back of his goggles. He's got a tracer yeah. on his gun. 
he just you know oh, yeah. you see him do those movies where it's like you know you're just three packs and stuff like that where he just does this run through beautifully and cleans up you know yeah awesome. i think he has a drone and it like it feeds <laughs> yeah. it feeds a video I feed think, to like his his yeah. eyeball like a it's, contact he's lens def- he's definitely cheating man it's not human he can't be doing yeah. what he's doing because you see you see him do like run throughs and you're like how how could you even see that from where he was at like how did he know that yeah. they were all looking the other way like yeah yeah he's amazing yeah, he and how he bl- he blocks out he he'll block he'll he'll stand in where there's no he's not even behind a bunker yep. he'll block someone out and run down the field Augmented. and he's been doing that for years he's been doing it forever yep. it's not like it's like one, a one-off thing every single event you can expect him to do something like that yep uh, does he go to there much for clinics um look uh no he used to come over a fair bit and play uh with different teams uh including uh the what they call the titans now from new zealand mm-hmm. dave hopkins team which is uh, playing in itself um, and when they were in Expendables, so he used to have, Expendables used to bring over like Ryan and, and Marcelo and maybe Blake quite a fair bit. So uh, yeah. there was actually, between, I think Marcelo was the main one. He he came over for all four events every year for about five or six years. So wow. yeah, yeah, he was a, a real regular. Um, and it, Ryan's played many of Super 7's events over here over the last decade or so. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really big part. It's what helps... Um, Having the Americans come over um, to sevens really helps raise the bar sure. for the Australian players. And we saw that when we first started encouraging people to try and get an American over uh, to jump on. You know, if someone had one American on their roster, they win the event. End of story. Mm. Just, you know, uh, whereas now you can even have two and doesn't guarantee you, you'll make finals pretty sure, depending, but, you know, it doesn't guarantee you win. Not to take away, the American players are definitely better than their level above the Australian players for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's not just the walk in the park anymore. But that's thanks to people like Marcelo and Ryan and, and, and Chad George and all the rest of them coming over. Because when you have one of those guys on your roster at the start gate doing the walkthrough on the maps and stuff like that before the event, and obviously being an absolute killing machine on the field as well, it just yeah. raises the bar for everybody else. Everybody lifts, which is cool. Yeah, it show. I mean, it shows the players there what's possible, how you can actually play paintball. When you see, when you see Ryan do the moves that he does, it's like, wow, that is possible. Let me start to look for opportunities to do moves like that. And like you said, it you know it raises the bar for players. So yeah. you know, it's it's it, it's not long. It's not going to be long before players start to adapt and and start to you know just there starts to be a hand, a higher standard of higher caliber of player uh, in Australia. Like well, that's what it's already, hoping. It's ho- hopefully, like I said, post-COVID world, um, yeah, airline tickets, you know, just have gone went one. through the oh crazy. I mean, even for inside of Australia. I mean, I remember talking to Dave uh, last year when they was for round three. They bought their tickets to go from New Zealand, you know, Dallas to Florida for World Cup. The tickets mm. were cheaper than New Zealand to Sydney. Now, just an mm. example: New Zealand to Sydney is a three-hour flight. Pre-COVID, it was like a three hundred and fifty dollar return flight, and you know, post-COVID, there were a couple of grand a ticket. It's ridiculous. So that's what are they now? Had to sort of, uh, about eleven hundred thousand, about a thousand bucks, eleven hundred bucks. So you know, if you think about it, if you got like a seven-man roster coming over for the sevens, um, yeah. you know, it's seven thousand dollars before you've paid for entry or bought a box of paint, accommodation, yeah. car, and of course, accommodation and car hire, like has happened over there. It's, is way more expensive now as well. So wow. these are all things I suppose that uh, all the leagues in the world have to sort of try and overcome. Yeah, I was going to say I need to get myself over to a Super Seven event, but I, maybe I got to yeah, save up awesome. first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I definitely, I definitely got to make it out there. I mean, I, 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 lo- I love Seven Man. That was one of my favorite favorite formats. Well, just I got to stop you there. Our Super Sevens is actually it's actually the same as X Ball. It's five on the field, but only two reserves. Oh. So we oh, gotcha. were, it was, yeah, it was seven man originally. And then when we made the change over to the race two format, we made a couple of little changes. And I said, uh, you can have seven guys in a match. So, but it's five on the field. So you've only got two reserves. So, so you can't just do this line and then do another line, another line. It's only yeah. seven guys. You get a couple injuries or it's, you know, 35 degrees Celsius over here. Which is, you know, What's the race two? Hot. It's race to four. Or four, submission okay. four. So so four nil, five one, six two. And but it's only yeah. a ten minute match. And of course so we run lead. fifteen BPS 
in the sevens. Oh, that's better. That's way better. You know, you know what they do here? Yeah. Yeah, ten, ten, and a ten half. point yeah. yeah, 10.5. Yeah. Yeah, look, yeah. It, it's everyone's different. I <laughs> I'm a big fan. Mike, well, because again, look, I'm going back to for the spectators, right? Yeah, uh, we've, got, that's what I'm we've got the sound so you can hear the gun shooting. And we get asked all the time, oh, what's that rate of fire? Blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to see the car crash, like in car racing. I want to exactly. see the, I want to see someone get blazed. The carnage. I'd, yeah, the carnage. You've got to, yeah. you know, what you're saying football, bring back the biff. And that's one thing I've been mean, I know I'm like the the last pariah in the industry that's doing the 15, I think, at this stage. And I do get a bit of flack sometimes from some of our supplies. Oh, why'd you drop it down? It's like, well, if you want to, you can play NXL or you can play any other event yeah. out there. But and uh, even our even our lower division, semi pro and amateur, they're twelve point five. So yeah, it just it just it sounds better on the webcast. It looks better. People get blazed harder. And um, yeah, is it ramping or semi? Ramp, ramp, ramp. Oh wow, that's fun. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You, people are getting roasted out there. <laughs> well, I so said if you get a chance afterwards, you can either go on YouTube. We can go onto Super Sevens Paintball.com. You can yeah, check I'm out actually on your site right now. You can, you can actually see any of the matches. If you go to the, the and you can do a little bar and you can go backwards and forwards. You would just do finals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's uh, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yes. Yeah, and I'll look, the Americans out. that come over, they seem to really enjoy playing it. Of course, like well, the ones that have been in the sport long enough remember when it was that way here. You know. Yeah. We even yeah, have full auto. Not there anymore. Yep. Yeah. I look, I speak with the pro division. If it was, if it was up to me running Excel, and I'm not, and I'm not intending to or anything like that, obviously. But yeah, I'd love to see the pros guys out all out there blazing 15, because then yeah. it'd be brutal, and that that would oh, make yeah. my 9.99 a lot better value. I think I'd be really, whoa, you know, because yeah, you want to see it when someone runs through and everyone goes, whoa, oh, <laughs> sick oh my god, exactly, look at that guy. You know, yeah, and, and you he's know, coming. Two minute turn your two minute turnaround, you're gonna so yeah, be even get sometimes you have to take the goggle off and just give me another mask because you know I can't yeah. clean that in two minutes. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 10.5 right now and uh, over there, and it is what it is. Yeah, it's it's still good. I mean, I think yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's good and good sports is good. Yeah, Obviously, 100%. you know, we want we want paintball to grow, so there you know, there are a lot of growth opportunities in paintball here just like there is everywhere. So we'll see what the NXL ends up doing. You know, they got the different formats. They got the 10 man, they got the, you know, X ball, they got women's X ball now. Yeah, so they have cool. a bunch of different things that they can create. Yeah. Women's X ball is really cool. Cause it's really exposing the sport to a demographic that hasn't been exposed to it before. My wife got interested when she saw the heroines documentary. She's like, Oh, I, I kind of want to play that. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Get you, get you in there. So, so, Mike, uh, what is your what is your most cherished? I'm not going to make you pick one. What's your most cherished paintball items? Uh, be it'd be um, probably my my marker <laughs> off my gun. Which one? I mean, I love my goggles and stuff like that. Well, look, it, I've got my old school gun. I mean, I've, I've got a few markers. Obviously, as you probably expect, with something you've been playing for a hundred years. Um, I've got my original <laughs> uh, auto cocker. Which I've got to be honest, I pretty much never use now. Um, oh my gosh, my... dude! Look at that. What's on the shroud there? Oh, it's a. Oh, it's a lady. Lady Joker, or something. So. Yeah. Let me see the side oh, of well. it. What is that? Oh, it's Sorry. like a splash anno, huh? Yeah, black and silver. So back in the nineties, uh, and it's got uh, windows. Yeah, got windows windows like where the bolts at. Yeah, well, take off the shroud. Uh, Let, let's see the uh, let's see the new. Uh, it's got oh, yeah, all inception go. design front end. I had to rebuild it a little while ago. So it's and a mini I, cocker. I, 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 yeah, and, uh, uh, nah, full size cocker. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a mini. Yeah, mini. And uh, I had um, normally I have a freak barrel. This this had a freak barrel, but I left the barrel at home, so I've just thrown my ultralight on the back of that. Well, so what's the story behind that bad boy? Uh well, back in the day, yeah. So. Uh, Smart Pass brought in all their Renegade gear back in the day, and they had all the. And uh, we, by Voter One, we picked Black and Silver Splash Renegade, and it was awesome. So uh, yeah, we bought, we got that, we wore them for a few years. So that's why the guns got the Black and Silver. But we did a lot of our stuff up the same, um, and uh, yeah, that sort of stuck for a while. And that's why the old school guys swap recon jerseys of the Black and Silver Splash as well. Mm. Uh, but then we've gone, I've gone more Black and Gold now, so which. 
So this is my latest bad boy. Thanks to Planet Eclipse. We're good oh, that's brand spanking new. That's an LVO. Well, no, it's, been, it's, it's been, yeah, LV2. Yeah, LV2. LV2. Yeah. Sorry, my camera is still a bit, but still a bit of Vaseline on screen, I'd say, but. Uh, gold. Yeah. yeah, black and gold with the. That's nice. HK barrel, that, yeah. H, yeah, HK fossil yeah. barrel. Yeah, laser, yeah, laser fossil. Laser. They just happen to make it that match the gun. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, that's a machine gun there. Yeah, they oh, I love it, man. I, I love my, my, my favorite gun of all time in the old days was my LV1, which I kept for ages. And now the LV2 is out. Well, yeah. It's the LV1. Okay, so have you shot, have you compared the LV2 and a, and a CS4? Uh, CS3. Ah, uh, yeah, shot both. I mean, look, we've we've got a team CS3 come in as well. Like the SWAT's a, a factory team from Eclipse. So, um, okay, yeah, so I, so here's I, what I'm I asking. Love, yeah, because you're you obviously you're you were a cocker guy, right? You like autocockers. Yes. So, what do you think shoots better, the open bolt LV2 or a close more like a uh, you know like a more like a spool valve CS? Look, to be honest, they're both awesome. But that said, I mean, I can grab an ether two off the wall or an ether three, and they shoot awesome as well. So, yeah. I mean, players are really spoilt nowadays. Um, yeah. There's not, there's not really like, there's not a lot on the market. You go, oh, well, this is crap, you know? No, um, no. Uh, but yeah, certainly, look, I had my LV1 and I had my CS2, and I started to sway more towards the CS2, and then the LV2 uh -huh. came out. So I've gone, I've just lifted my skirt up and gone straight across. And <laughs> Back to the LV2, and when the CS3 comes in, yeah, I'll, I'll, it'll probably be me. I, the boys on the on the team, they they they've got both, and they love them, and they're all keen waiting for the, the CS3s to come out as well. But I I know there's just something cool about that little thing going backwards and forwards really fast on the LV when you're shooting it. Um, yeah. But you know they, they don't they don't break paint. They both shoot really straight. You get a ton of shots off just about any size tank. And the great thing uh, with with I mean, like everything from Eclipse, you know, you just pull out of the box, it just shoots every time, you know. It's yeah. No... Yeah, I use a CS2 yeah. and I got an M170, so both Planet Eclipse guns. Yeah. And, you know, I hate to admit yeah. it, but I, I mean, I don't I don't grease them as much as I as I should, and they still perform well. With the, with the LVs, and the LEDs will probably kill me, but with the LVs, man, I never lube any of my egos, ever. And it might be just once in a blue moon when uh, Johnny, my the other owner of Action Paint and everything, He'll go pull it apart and give it a service, but you know, it, they just yeah, that's one thing I do like about the LVs. Yeah, they, might, they just don't need, you know, they got a Delrin bolt. Yeah, I'm probably a bad so you, but you have to lube, you have to lube the RAM, right? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, C, the CS, boys, you don't exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you know, the CS2, you got to lube them like what every 30 or 40,000 shots. I mean, it's just like. And I don't play a lot, so I mean, you know, my my guns yeah. see daylight maybe once every three or four months. It's terrible. It's really sad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just yeah, they're both really dope. And like I said I'm I'm pretty consistent, but I'm using my CS2 now. Like I had a M170R as well, which I loved. I was using it for the mechanical ten man every year. Yeah. And uh, uh, last year I got the neck frame for the CS2, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll let someone else use the M170. So and it's the better. With the, the, the CS2 with oh. the neck frame is. Dope, man! It is really. I see. I've been holding back. Dope. Yeah. Now I could say that I'm not. I'm not knocking the the, the G Tech. I love G Techs. They're awesome. But yeah, you shoot the two side by side. Yeah. The the CS2 with the mech frame is is. See, I already have a CS2, is, so I just need to get the mech frame. Yeah, I'll get the mech frame, man. 100. percent 100. percent It is awesome. See, my logic was, I'll just get another. Like, I, I I just assume they're like basically the same gun, so I'll just get an. I'll have two guns instead of you know changing the grip frames. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I got to check that out. Mech frame. Yeah, uh, I'm sure yeah. you'll find someone over there's got a mech frame on a CS2 out of ten men you can have a shoot off. Oh yeah, for sure. But and I also got to shoot a, a TM40 because I heard those are really good too. Yeah, yeah, the mech on them is really nice as well. The mech frame on them is really cool. Yeah. So. Um, back back to your autococker. Did you cut those windows and the bolt and where the hammers at? Did you do that? Yeah, after so you anodized it. Yeah, so basically, uh, back in the uh, late 90s, we had the bands come in and, uh, you know, we couldn't bring in any semi-autos. So uh, I'm lucky, John, the other owner, uh, Caruana, 
uh, we've got a mill and lathe and like that. And uh, yeah, John was, we were just bringing in snipers and John was doing custom bodies on every, so every, it's what we call an SS cocker. It's a Sydney SWAT cocker. They made like 10, we made 10 of them, I think of memory. Each one mm. uniquely different uh, body. But yeah, John did all the machining, converted it, brought the front end in, converted it into a, an auto cocker. And uh, we had a place in Sydney that we could do the, uh, the anodizing back in the day. No one does it anymore. We actually did the anodizing ourselves. So it's oh, a pain wow. in the ass. But you guys are lucky, oh, man. Arc Anodizing and, and all those other companies you've got in the States that do just such super of them. dope. Yeah. Oh, we've got nothing like that in Australia, mate. You know, if you, yeah, I've got, I've got this off shade bronze. I've got this off shade pink. I've got this pale, <laughs> sickly looking blue. I can anodize any of those colors for you if you want. No, thanks. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, here we can do the Thunderstruck Anno. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. It may, I, I see the stuff on, on Facebook all the time and just go, oh. I mean, when Eclipse <laughs> did that uh, LB, they did the LB2s from like the five different anodizers. I mean, every yeah. one of them was just awesome. Stellar, yeah. Yeah. But it's America, yeah. mate. You've got all the best of everything over there, so. I guess so, you know. And it's you a do, funny yeah. it's, it's funny thing like when we're talking about it because like unless you play paintball, you have no idea what we're talking about right now, you know. Yep. But, it's, but it's funny because like, you know, that's why I'm a paintball nerd is because like we we nerd out on the different colors, right? The different yeah. patterns we can put on our paintball guns, these things that yeah. shoot paintballs. Oh, and, it makes it shoot much the, better, you know. Oh, it definitely adds <laughs> – yeah. <laughs> it adds rate of fire. It adds rate yeah, of fire. Yeah, at least three, four sure. balls a second. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So if you cap it at 10.5, you basically negate all the horsepower that you're giving your gun through the cool yeah, anode so, job. So I just want to do a shout out. Anyone in America who's got some of these really dope-looking anode guns, there's no point in even owning them. Just send me a, a message and we'll, we'll, we'll flick you a couple hundred bucks and we'll take them off your hand, save you the pain. There you go. So go back and Mike Weiber is going to get gun. you taken care of. <laughs> yeah, I'll look after you. No worries at all. <laughs> Mike, what, what does it take to make it in paintball, man? What advice would you give for someone who wants to build a career out of it? Oh, geez. Well, since I've been doing it for 30 years and I still work seven days a week, I'd probably say I'm not the best person for advice. <laughs> But you uh, love it. This, you, that's this why you do it. <laughs> not what to do. I love it, but I don't get to play very much anymore. So I don't. That's true. I, you know, that's, yeah, that's that's the biggest good. suck. I mean, it wasn't too bad working all the time, but being at a travel all the time and playing event here and playing event there. I mean, I, I know back uh, would have been like in the late nineties, early two thousand. I think I did eighteen events in one year. It was just crazy. It was almost like every weekend I'm running a paper field, but every weekend I was going somewhere else to play. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, those yeah. Unfortunately, there's not as many events over here as there used to be and stuff as well, which also makes it hard. Well, hopefully cloning takes off and you can just clone yourself and have that guy do all oh, the work. Oh, I'd, I'd pick a better body. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I want to clone someone to form my brain and someone else's, someone younger's body. That'd be really good. Then I could make yeah. it a chance. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, what, what are you most thankful for that, that paintball has given you in life? Uh, a lot of, like I said, the, the traveling, meeting a lot of people, having a lot of friends all around the world and uh, yeah. a, a lot of really, you know, meeting a lot of really cool people in Australia as well. Uh, we've got a, a, a pretty loyal band of uh, players and stuff that, you know, attend our events and they support our store and they support our field. And, uh, you know, we're really, I'm really thankful for that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, just mainly just, I, you know, I, I may bitch and moan, but I do love paintballs. So coming to work, every day he's in a total suck if you know what i mean yeah. like you know I, I could be doing something worse yeah it yeah. could be in accounting or something oh yeah yeah no, no. <laughs> <laughs> i'd lose my job on that one for sure <laughs> awesome mike well thank you so much for your time here is there anything Very that you want to part with for the uh, paintball no. community just a big shout out to all the ballers. Uh, and yeah, if you want, check out super7spaintball.com. Uh, like I said uh, in May, uh, a free webcast. And like I said, if you go to the webpage now, you can actually see a lot of the matches, actually all the matches for like the last, I don't know, six or seven years. Um, yep. So yeah, feel free to check it out. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, feel free to comment and stuff on that when you, if you when we're doing the next one. But uh, yeah, cool. thank you we for the opportunity to talk. And uh, yeah, good luck with the show too, bro. Thanks, Mike. So we got actionpaintball.com to check out his field. We got super, the number seven, spaintball.com. And we got action paintball games, right? To check out the... Oh, oh paintballshop.com. 
Oh, paintballshop.com. I'm sorry, I didn't have that up. Grass store. That's okay. It's all good. Paintballshop.com, super the number seven s paintball.com and actionpaintball.com. Check it out. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.